live from our racing's virtual Texas Motor Speedway. We say good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to round number six of the 2024 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. And as always, happy that you're spending your Monday night with us here on Race Spot TV. We're alongside myself, Evan Pasoko. Happy to be joined tonight by Lorenzo Bonder in the Race Spot TV booth. And our producer down uh, downstairs is Dade Baird bringing us to you this evening. And Texas Motor Speedway, a racetrack that had not been at the tops of many people's lists on the oval calendars the last couple of years since a recent 2020 reconfiguration, Lorenzo. However, these NASCAR Next Gen Cup Series cars have breathed some life into the one and a half mile category. And after an exciting race earlier this year in Las Vegas, we look for some more of that here tonight in round number six. Absolutely, and I gotta love me some Texas. I always bring up some good races, and like you said, I think this resurgence of the next gen coming into the, these one mile, one mile and a half ovals, trying to make it a little bit more of a packy race uh, than what the Gen Force couldn't do back in the old days. Even the the, uh, the car of tomorrow couldn't even do that as well. Just makes things more interesting. But then again, this is one of the tracks where I know track tire management, especially I would say the right rear, is going to become really in the front rear uh, as well, front right as well. Of course, Texas, uh, an interesting date as well. Uh, we will see it uh, a little bit later on this year in the playoffs, which is a good thing to notice. We take a look at the playoff standings. The story early on this season has been the, I will say, continued dominance of the two times defending Cup Series champion Agato Phillip, as he has got three race wins already in five starts. He's off to the hottest start to a year that he has had yet. That includes race wins in Daytona, Bristol, Richmond, none of the one and a half mile racetracks that we've seen this year. The race wins in Atlanta and Las Vegas have been gone to Bradley Burke and Manazzi Majors. So those trends would suggest maybe an opportunity for somebody else to find victory lane tonight. Of course, Freenosh, George Lariah, they have all been good, just not good enough for a win. Wins will lock you in, but plenty of points paying positions available for drivers to qualify into the postseason based on points and Taking a live look in now at single car qualifying. Five minutes, two laps apiece as we get set to set the grid. Yeah, absolutely. And from what it looks like, the majority of the grid has already set their laps in. Uh, Evans and Agno Phillip, just like usual, I think, like just normal businesses at the top of the board. But Cody Harris put up a really good fight. Just 1,000 of a second, which is insane to think about for Texas, separating both of them. Cody just off the mark, the 19 machine on the racetrack right now. That's Bradley Burke, who will come to the end of his lap. Many drivers will actually go beyond the two scheduled laps. Uh, they'll use it as an opportunity to uh, get a little bit of extra practice in and whatnot. But uh, no shocker that Agano Phillip tentatively top of the board. He did get a pole at Bristol a little bit earlier this year, uh, but it had actually been Liam Sheen who had been Mr. Qualifying so far this year. He's qualified pole in three of the five. Liam, though, unable to make the start here this evening. So maybe that opens up the doors for some of these other drivers. We've seen Freenosh get a pole so far this year. But impressive stuff at a Nieto, Lariya, and the aforementioned Freenosh P5. Flap going to come to an end there across the start-finish line for Mike Maddox. He's currently 22nd on the board. Uh, no improvement there. That'll be his final timed lap. And uh, Philip Radochik jumps up to P10. He's making his first start of the season. Maybe somebody interesting to keep an eye on as well through the midfield. But uh, with the car count in the mid 20s, doesn't look like many drivers are laid back, sandbagging, opting not to choose the time and qualifying. We'll see that sometimes runs up when you've got those big 30 40 car fields almost everybody taking a time here in qualifying yeah which is a little bit impressive i think only steven silva actually was the only one who didn't take a lot of pen and uh, and what impresses me if, even though this is fixed setup is the proximity between everybody if i saw i think what the gap to three tenths of a second uh, extended all the way back to 10th 11th 12th place so this 
shows how close it is on this qualifying should provide us a really good racing moving forward. And with that, the qualifying session has drawn to a close. So let's go trackside and take a look at your RSR starting grid here tonight from Texas. So Agato Phillip does hang on to pull his 30.320 best of them all. He will bring us to the green flag one one thousandth of a second behind him to the 28 car to Cody Harris, who will start in second. Sam Nieto will start third on the grid tonight. Michael O'Reilly going to be alongside in the number four spot. They'll make up row number two. And then Andrew Freenosh and Bradley Burke Lorenzo round through row number three. Yeah, absolutely good. And we have Brandon Gass and Grant Davis for row four. Maverick Davis and Philip Radocic round out of the top ten. And Ross Cato and Thomas George make it six rows here, Evan. That'll give Dalton Randolph the lucky number 13 spot in his RSR debut. Alongside him, going to be Jared Widemaster in 14th. Brett Larson starts tonight P15. Manazzi Major will start from the number 16 spot. Manazzi race winner from a couple of weeks back in Atlanta. Chris Trepo starting tonight in 17th and Kyle Trudell in 18th. Then to round out of the top 20, we have Barry Papineau and James Ross. DeAndre Kane and Mac Mike Maddox are your 11th row with the last driver. The one to the set of lap end was Steve Silva in 20th third. So Silva, the only driver to start based on provisional and essentially it's just a guaranteed ticket to the back as he will start shotgun on the field here tonight in 23rd as the field rolls. We talk a little bit more about this intermediate racetrack 1.5 miles in length it means that we'll go racing tonight for 134 laps to get to our scheduled distance in the texas 200 uh, as always to your point earlier fixed setups for all the cars in this series there are no fast repairs available what you've got is what you get there will be four additional tire sets if necessary uh if it is a greed flag race likely not going to use all of them and a big reason behind that that 100 fuel capacity also worth noting if required overtime opportunities are there a plenty three attempts at an overtime restart should we need a little bit more than the scheduled distance but this texas race kind of falls right into the bucket of what makes up the bulk of this calendar but will it be a sign of things to come for later on this year, Agato Phillip has been dominant so far. A three times race winner. Can he go for number four? Or to the likes of Harris, Nieto, and Lariah say otherwise? Pace car down and in. Agato Phillip, the field is in his hands. Let's go racing at Texas. Lot number one in the books at Agato Phillip leads from pole all over him for the top spot, though, is Sam Nieto, who trails in second. And there's a little bit of three wide back in the mid pack still as they head back down to turn three. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and also nearly saw a three wide going into the top five as well. I think Loria was trying to find a run in on both Brendan Gas and Farinas, but uh, for, unfortunately, we didn't get that. And uh, so far, that inside line over there in Texas for turn number one and three, working really very well for Agno Phillip. And look how wide that corner is, but look how low all the cars are. It is a deceptively wide turn. The racing groove is really centered down to the bottom one and a half lanes or so in the middle of the corner. So not as much space to work with as it would look. Things certainly tighter at this end of the racetrack in three and four. And you can see as those top four are single filed out, Loria P5, the one who struggled a little bit that time through the corner. They're side by side for fifth and it may be side by side for the lead. The two and Nieto going to look under the Donny four of Agnel Phillip. Phillip going to be able to carry the speed top side. He'll shake him off for now. But Sam Nieto aggressive early looking for the top spot. 
Yeah, which is kind of interesting how Nieto just carried the, so much speed into the inside, and but uh, the deceptiveness, like you just said, out of the turn number two just makes the outside line sometimes work a little bit better for you to pick up a little bit of more speed than uh, normally you would. would. I know the Indy cars, they kind of tend to do that from time to time, use the outside lane a little bit more than usual to get a better run, but uh, so far, really solid race so far, five laps in. You can see a couple of cars darting at a line that time off into the corner. It looked like it was maybe gas in the 20. The lone car topside you see there, the 24, a Grant Davis. He's kind of getting shuffled out of line, though. Got a little bit loose off of turn number three. He'll get past as Lariah's going to go on by. The 15, a Maverick Davis as well. So some struggles from him. But up front, Nieto going to look to the inside again. Couldn't make it stick two laps ago. Can he do it this time? Down the back straightaway, he does. New race leader at lap number six. How about Sam Nieto taking it away from the defending series champion? Yeah, but the thing is that the, and this is not over just yet. I think Agno Phil is going to try to find that run here, Evan. It's just a matter of where and when. I know is going to do that. Meanwhile, Michael Oria manages to overtake Bradley Burke, who was a little bit contested, but there's a still back and forth between those guys you see at the back of the frame going for six and seven. Yeah, looking to the inside again, that kind of black and purple number 20 gas thinks about it, doesn't do it. The 19 to Burke now to his outside and They'll do the tango for P5 and 6 on the racetrack. And look at Gas get that run off of turn four, down the banking, carry his speed down the front stretch and off it into turn number one. And can he clear now as he gets back into the throttle first off of two? Yes, he does. Not only is Burke going to clear, but Lariah saw what was happening. He went topside. So the 20 of Gas struggling just a bit. Meanwhile, Burke feels like he can pass anywhere. Just made a move up top. Now he tries to go to the inside at the 88 car yeah all right I try to go for that outside lane and use a little bit of the draft to try to get around the Bradley Burke on uh, Brendan gas on the inside so a uh, pretty good battle over there and now Burke from what it looks like just like you said trying to hold it hold that inside lane to get a really good run meanwhile the losing position is for Reiners to Burke like we just said and Burke is on the move, tried it bottom, couldn't make it stick, said fine, I'll just go right back to the outside of the racetrack and has the upper hand right now as that battle for uh, what is fourth and fifth continues on. The advantage to the 19 car at the stripe, Freenosh not giving it up yet, still holding on the bottom, but it's going to prove to be too much. And in turn number two, Burke is clear. And that 44, Lariah kind of like it, but he's seeing out of the 19 car. Lariah has just been following Burke through the field the last couple of laps. And it's been a strategy that has paid dividends as it's also allowing that Sim Speed Shop Chevrolet to move through the field. But Bradley Burke started P6 in this race, has made two passes in the last three laps. And wants to look up front there's not a lot of separation amongst these leaders your top eight cars all separated by about one second i wonder if it's going to continue like this this is what i was going to bring up the point right now it is a pack race of sorts right now but because i, I don't know if it's fixed that was make it a little bit more closer evan but uh we know this track uh with the you know arrow push and everything and these cars being a little bit heavy and the and require more turn in than usual how much punishment will the front right and also maybe the rear are going to take with so many dives and try to stick to the lines appropriately uh, on the re-acceleration out of number two and four. And to that point, I, I think that's also why I'm not shocked that Agno Phillip wasn't too worried about the move from Sam Nieto. Agno, one of the veteran drivers who will very much see early in a run if somebody's being really aggressive to not fight them for it. Right. Let them have the spot. Let them use up their stuff. Run the pace that you want, the pace that you feel like is going to win you the checkered flag at the end of the night and then see on the long run. Was that conservation? Was that saving going to benefit you? Still side by side between Lariah and Freenosh. This one's been going on for some time. Burke was able to clear the 88 pretty quick. The 44, not quite as lucky. I still think he's got the upper hand and might get to it this time off of four, but Freenosh doing everything he can to make things difficult for the 44. And to that point of conserving, managing your equipment, you stay side by side like this for lap after lap after lap. You're going to be eating up your stuff 
much more compared to the cars that are single file. No, absolutely. And, and that outside of the line uh, makes a little bit more of uh, that movement. Oh, this is going to be a little bit complicated as we see three wide coming out of three. Near contact, I think Burke has to lift off a little bit and nearly make contact with uh, Farinas and Lariah outside, but still three wide can be dangerous. We could see a yellow flag over here. It was a bold move, and there's still three wide. Burke, center of it all. It's the 15 at Davis on the inside, and the 20 at Brandon Gass, top side. Gass going to lead that battle off a two, and it'll be high to low where the advantage lies. And how about Andrew Freenosh? We were kind of talking about him like a sitting duck, saying it was about a matter of time for Orion to get around him. He sees a small bobble from the 19 car. He pounces, and Freenosh holds P4, and Burke, who had been the star of the show, moving forward the last few laps, now down to P7. It's the lowest we've seen the 19 car so far tonight. Yeah, but I don't think Burke is all the way that concerned. I think his only concern was trying to stay alive on during that three-wide uh, situation right there. Evan, but the... The good thing is, uh, I, I don't think he lost too much equipment, like the, didn't waste a lot of tire wear, trying to maintain his lane in the middle lane. But uh, the good thing is, still within that uh, outside of the top five contention, that's what he wants to have right now. Meanwhile, Cody Harris back in third place. So Cody Harris slides another spot down as uh, Sam Nieto has taken control of things up front. He has led the last 11 after Agato Phillip led the opening five. Still not a ton of separation amongst these cars. I'd say that's kind of the top, I'll give it top seven or so. Still hanging in there. That includes this side-by-side -side battle with Cato on the outside of the 50 to Maverick Davis who has slid down. And there's a small gap from those cars on to the secondary pack in the midfield has certainly started to separate. We've got cars as many as 15 seconds off of the leaders. That's still a whole half a lap away, though. So lap traffic, not a concern yet. Is those Tron colors on the 12 of Cato jump out of line. He goes to the inside of Burke, and they'll go door to door in a battle for P7. Yeah, and I think Cato has the upper hand right here coming outside into the inside, rather, on turn number one and then into the front stretch. Is going to have also the advantage coming to the turn number one, carry a little bit more speed, hanging that inside line. And uh, for now, Ross Cato will be your seventh place. And Cody Harris battling hard against Farinas because Farinas, you know, just trying to do his best, you know, getting that inside the top three. But most importantly, maintaining touch with the top two of Agno Phillip and Sam Nieto. Green flag from the get-go here in this sixth round of this 2024 championship. And happy that you're with us here on Respot. Nieto still leads, but Agno Phillip has started to slowly reel him back in. That had gradually opened up, I'd say, maybe five to six car lengths at a max. Uh, Nieto never got mm -hmm. completely clear of the challenger in Agno Phillip, but it was certainly more comfortable than it is now. And... We've seen Burke make passes, struggle, drop back. Nieto made a quick charge to the front of the field. Does he then have to deal with that same kind of positive and negative reaction? Is the two going to struggle a little bit more on this run? And also a long run still to go, right? I mentioned off of the top the kind of intricacies of, you know, what does a, a field oh, of the do for cars, but we're wrecking. Yeah, contact outside of number two. I think that was uh, Thomas George and Dalton Randolph making contact outside of two. Yellow flag is out. Well, the point that I was going to say is 20 laps in, but these green flag runs can go a long way with the smaller car counts. But right as I was about to mention it, that trouble that you saw for turn number two going to put us under caution of flag number one on the afternoon. Thomas George certainly involved. You see the smoke at the scene of the spin. He will... Get back up to pace. Doesn't look like a ton of damage on the 26 car. Some new colors on Thomas George's Mustang for tonight's race. And we'll wind it back and take a second look to see what caused this accident between George and possibly uh, that 26 car of Dalton Randolph. Randolph making his first start in the Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series here tonight was just outside of the top 10, so not what the 28 car, 26 car, I should say, wanted. Uh, so a tough break again. We'll get a look at that in the moment. Here it is. Not a lot of damage. This was in turn number two. 
I think uh, from what it looks like, uh, George's car just got a loose outside of number two during a reacceleration and Randolph, nothing much he can do right there, causing the contact and then the number six narrowly avoiding, actually he did hit the wall uh, on the inside apron of the backstretch, but that wasn't too much damage on the car, I think. Yeah, just a kiss on the left rear for George. And again, that little bit of a loose condition from Randolph caused that one. Uh, but I think uh, both drivers won't be too upset with how that one comes to an end. Uh, they both get away relatively free from damage. Uh, that is going to bring, though, the entire field down pit road. I mentioned that they do have four additional tire sets. If you use them at this rate, you're going to run out soon. But for an early pit stop, I don't think it's a shocker that everybody was down and in. It is four tires in fuel throughout the field. And what that means is that Sam Nieto is going to defend the number one spot. He will stay up in front in as the race leader. Uh, so he's not going to mind too much at all. Good pit stop execution for him. Yeah. And for everybody else, I was just looking 38.7 was the average on the lane. Except for Agno Phillip. Agno stayed 40.7. Maybe he picked up some damage. Our uh, championship leader uh, of the number 94 but uh relegated to fifth place but other than that didn't lose a lot of spots inside the, outside of the top five you know that's what it is important he's gonna be staying at the inside line when we get to green flag uh for the first restart of the race but uh it is just like I say i think you, you get you know the free estate of putting in new fuel more fuel new tires you know this have a lot of rubber still left to put up in the track so uh they won't. They wouldn't mind coming down the line. No crazy strategies on this first pit stop of the race. Yeah, keep the status quo. Uh, no big moves to improve your position. Also, no big moves to risk your position. So everybody pretty content with allowing this one to to just race itself out. Let's have time to, to figure it out before we uh, jeopardize anything. And we will go from there. So lights out on top of the pace car. Again, no big swings on the pit lane. But I do want to give a quick shout to Chris Trepa. The 50 car qualified 17th in this race. Obviously not what the 50 car wanted. However, he is now plus nine spots. So Trepa has been working his way through the field. Lorenzo, a tip of the cap to him. It does mean, though, that he restarts on row four. He's going to be right in the thick of things on this restart. Yeah, absolutely. The Rory Esports driver did very well. I think that was the fastest pit stop by everybody. 38.3. That's why you got to jump on everybody else. Well done. First time tonight, we will go back under green flag conditions. And after our pulse that Ragnar Phillip brought us to the drop of the green flag, it'll be control car Sam Nieto in control of the restart procedure. He can go any time from when the pace car exits the racing surface to the end of the Geico restart zone on the inside of the apron. Green flag in the air. It's a good jump for him. Inside line reaps the benefits. Here comes gas on the inside of Harris. And there you go. Gas inside already made the move. So the number 20 jumps into second spot already. The thing is that inside line is going to hold very strong over here. I think for the first two, three laps. And then after maybe the outside lane may become a preference down the line. So the 20 is clear. And now does Cody Harris struggle? Started on the outside of the front row, but is going backwards. Lost second. Now has he lost third? Because the 94 of Phillip clear on the inside. And there's more where that came from. Lariah to the bottom. So after a lot of those spots on the top seem to be the better place to be on the first run, at least getting up to speed, Harris struggling on the outside of the racetrack. I think now that he's got a lap to get up to speed, things will turn around for him as now he's back on the offensive, trying to get back around the 44 car. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, uh, like I said, the repair damage that he probably had on the car just um, helped out the issue a little bit for the number 94. And uh, that reset, it's, it's, you know, like you said, reset of the status quo. You know, for, for everybody, and especially Agno Findle, to you know, help out him on the long run. Just hoping that we have actually a really good, fast, long run on green flag. Midfield playing nice, and so is Nieto up front. His advantage, a comfortable car length and a half to Brandon Gas. Gas also the highest we've seen him so far tonight as he sits in P2 with Agno Phillip, your pole sitter, in the number three spot. Single file for a moment, but Harris 
seemingly determined to make up for some of the lost ground. Got past by Danani four. He looks to the outside. Cody Harris wants to get back to it. Agato Phillip, I think, is going to have his hands full in this battle for P3. Look at Harris, though. Backs way off on the entry to the corner. Phillip goes way deeper in, but then the 28 gets back to the gas sooner. It's not going to be enough to pass him here, but two very different approaches to that turns three and four complex between these two cars. Back down here in one and two, a little bit more similar on the entry as we get the onboard perspective from Agato Phillip. Yeah, still trying to retain that... Uh that gap to Brendan Gas so far. Two tenths of a second separate uh, him to uh, to Gas and uh, Cody Harris trying to have a good, really good run, but still two tenths behind. It's a little bit interesting to see this uh, technique of the slow in, fast out. Normally, this is more of a road technique that you that a lot of the drivers use for you to maximize the corner exit and the corner entry per se. So you, you normally wouldn't see that in ovals, especially in an oval like this, you know, try to maximize the corner exit because you'd really want to burn out the rears as Gaz has a good run on Nieto. He's got a good run this time through. What does Nieto have? Does he vary his line? Does he go for a defensive maneuver? Or does he just hold strong? And Nieto for the moment just holding as he's been enjoying his time up front now. It was a lap led for Gas a lap ago, but he was unable to clear. Now he does. So Brandon Gas now out in front, pulls away from Sam Nieto. And now Nieto, what happens? We saw Agato Phillip in the 94 car lead early, get passed for the top spot, and then when he got back there into traffic, P2 struggled just a touch, fell as deep as P4. Now that Nieto's in that same spot, do we see the same thing? Will Phillip, Will Harris, are they going to pounce on this two car? Or does Nieto maintain pace? Right now it certainly looks like he's getting attacked because Gas is pulling away in front and they're stacking up behind him. Yeah, and I think it is a dangerous stack as now Phillip goes on the inside of Nieto. I don't think Nieto's going to fight back that much as now he's going to lose second and now lose third as well to Cody Harris. Cody Harris is making up for the time lost that he had on the restart and might open the door for Lariat to come in through as well. I, I'm thinking that Nieto might be saving a little bit of tire so he doesn't overheat the, those fronts uh, as the stretch of the green flag run goes on by. When we talk about that as well, it is uh, worth noting uh, no rain in the forecast. I know it's a bit silly to say that with the oval, but I, I enjoy this <laughs> way to plug the rain. Uh, it is clear and it is hot conditions right now. 82 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's a track temp of 116. So you talk about that tire conservation on a long green flag run. Yes, it is a newer pave surface, right? 2020 repave here at Texas. So the racetrack isn't quite as cheese gratery as an older surface would be, but those yep. hot temps will mean that that tire degradation happens at a quicker rate and just something to keep in mind is we see now that 44 car tuck back in line the ryan not going to make a move he'll hold steady p4 yeah which is uh, you know this repavement like you just we said on the start of the broadcast made the uh, texas you know i would say a much better track in my opinion for you to have a race and have these back races and things like that i think makes the racing more exciting we always knew coming from the get-go that texas is one of the fastest tracks one of the fastest fastest one and a half mile tracks that you have not only the nascar calendar but global calendars period but uh, making this close for everybody and having the you know, this, this new generation be aerodynamically capable, you know, you, you handling the 20 degree banking turns on one and two and 24 on the three and four bankings, uh, much more capable and, uh, and steady as the, and the, as the run goes on. And this looks like uh, very similar to what we saw in the first run, right? The top six, seven or so, single file, all lined up with each other. And really nobody running away, really nobody, the dominant car by a large margin as they run at the moment. But uh, Brandon Gash enjoying his time up front. We've had three different drivers lead laps so far here tonight. Agato Phillip on the bounce back, but still about a six or a seven tenth of a second bubble, I would say, between first and second right now. We'll see if Phillip can chip into that. Last time around, their lap times basically identical in the car's first and second spot. Uh, just kind of browsing through. Again, I mentioned some of the drivers had been made moves. Chris Trepper was one of them. Kyle Trudell as well is up eight spots. Those cars ninth and 10th respectively. But I would say this 
second stint kind of settled down a tad quicker than what we saw the first time around. I agree. I think this uh, settled way quicker than I expected it to be. I think only the restart that was a little bit more aggressive when uh, Harris lost the position to, you know, Philip or I and in, 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 in Nieto eventually. But other than that, it's it's been very calm. It's I don't know if it is like the calmery before or the calm before the storm. I hope it isn't. As we have a look on Sim Nieto's uh, inputs from his cockpit uh, for flat out esports, but it, it it did pick down a little bit more than I expected it to be. And yeah, we'll see if that continues to be uh, the trend for this run or not. Uh, 134 laps on the board here tonight. That is not a long race. It's half distance of what the NASCAR Cup Series runs. Uh, but just because it's not a long race doesn't mean it's a short one either. Dependent on strategy, dependent on yellows and restarts and everything that comes with all of that. Uh, these races can drag just a touch. Uh, so these drivers would certainly not complain about some pace. Uh, you know, earlier this year, the only comparable track we've run in Las Vegas, four yellows in that intermediate race a little bit earlier this year. We just have the one so far that happened earlier in this race. Um, none of the drivers involved in that accident out of this race, it is worth noting, but we do have our first driver to the garage. Mike Maddox is uh, stationary on pit road, no longer behind the wheel of that car. He is looking to DNF and finish in 23rd is... Here we go. That 88 car of Freenosh was mixing it up there for a moment with the 44 of Lariah. If they do it again, that's going to be for P5. Yeah. Meanwhile, also another battle for 10th uh, and 9th. Like you said, Trudell and Trepa battling for that uh, final spot outside of the top 10. But uh, really good, really good stuff going on as Farina is trying to have a little bit of a second win on the middle of the stand. I think we're, what, uh, nearly 18 laps in on the second uh the green flag stint which is a really good one uh, we're approaching where uh, that normally threshold of or maybe we're gonna start to see a big big pack uh breaking away from uh, one another maybe two packs of distinct cars the question is how big it will be and the longer we go the more things will stretch out we'll continue to see have some of these drivers been set up for the short run are they pushing early to be aggressive and will that hurt them on a long run or is it going to be the opposite Does some of these drivers lay back the not greatest of starts for the likes of cody harris does he bounce back and go on the offensive all of those are things that you can't really tell you until we get later this is the point though in that first stint right about 18 19 laps in but we saw that little bit of a moment there with randolph off a of turn two got sideways that collected Thomas George that caused the one and only yellow that we've seen so far. So clearly there were some kind of handling issues at this point in the first run. So keep an eye out. Does anybody else now that we've gotten 20 laps in, do they start to have some of those similar issues? Once you start to have handling issues, it becomes more car versus track than it does car versus car. And you'll see some of those battles is all oh, trouble is up front. Battle for the lead is on. Philip under and by Brandon Gas in the blink of an eye. Yeah, I think that was long overdue. We saw the gap come down quicker than both lightning, uh, lightning strikes. So, uh, Gas, you know, just not going to find way that much against Agno Philip. You're going to see the move uh, from the front stretch and also the run coming into turn number one from uh, from Agno Philip. But meanwhile, really good race so far. The question is, I think I saw some cars, you know, getting wobbly outside of number two during acceleration, Evan. I think that's where we're going to start. Maybe having some drivers with the big difficult coming out of those corners where the car is going to, you know, lose grip. And there's that second look. And the second gas opened the door. Agno Phillip took advantage. It was about as clean of a pass as you'll be able to get. And now you're pole sitter who hasn't spent much time up in front leading this race gets a second crack at the clean air he's opened up a bit of a margin half a second right now and now gas will decide is he gonna push to try to stay with agonophilip 
Or is he going to have to deal with the challenge from behind? It kind of looks like two battles here. The battle for second and third. Gas over Nieto. And then behind them a battle, I think, soon between the red 28 of Harris and the black 88 of Freenosh. That one for fourth and fifth. And as I say that, they do go side by side. A 28 just kind of slid up off of the bottom. Freenosh gets under him. It's been tricky, though, for cars to complete passes on the inside. So curious if the 28 was going to force the issue there. Instead, he lets Freenosh go. That is kind of that long term mentality. It's not worth tearing up my stuff for four or five laps. Let him go. And I think Harris struggling because he's going to lose another spot now. The 44 of Loria gets past him. And then in front of them for P2, Brandon Gass gets passed up by Sam Nieto. Yeah, and for Nieto, it was pretty much textbook maneuver on, on Gas. There was a little bit of a battle coming from Gas outside of three and four. But uh, when it came down to turn number one, I think uh, the number 20 just let the number two go by. And uh, just like you said, I don't want to, you know, overstress my machine, my equipment with what we have so far. And still, from a good perspective of a, of a green flag run as we go on. And good chance that uh, Cody Harris might lose also the position to Maverick David, as even though the cap is about three tenths of a second between the number 28 and the number, number 15. Looking at the pace right now, 85 laps to go. Maybe a potential to one stop pit strategy wise to the end. Uh, but you've really started to see things stretch out. Opening 15 some odd laps of the run. Those top five, six, seven cars still within a second and change of each other now. There's only two cars within one second of the leader. And that's going to continue to spread out. Agato Phillips advantage just at about one full second it is the biggest race lead we've seen for anybody so far in this texas 200 so philip leads over nieto over gas freenosh and lariah they're your top five as we run now the cars in the top three have all led laps tonight philip just led his 12th nieto has led 24 and gas has led 14 nobody else has had an opportunity up at the front of the field just quite yet but i think these drivers have kind of recognized this may be the midway portion in the race to log some laps there's still plenty going on we jump back here to the battle for 10 11 and 12 that is the 12 of cato being pressured by the 24 of grant davis we'll see how this battle mixes it up it's some of the closest stuff on track right now yeah, absolutely. And Kato finding him, he's going to find them in a world of trouble right now as uh, Davis goes on the inside right here. He's going to have maybe the run outside of number two on Ross Kato, but Kato may be able to hold on just because of the draft coming out of three and four. But uh, you just like just like you said, you're going to log in some laps. You know, you know, the you know, the run is probably going to go green all the way. There isn't any danger for you to get a yellow flag as this goes on. Maybe a one stopper, just like you said. So uh, it, it is just like now maintenance. Try to keep your car on the track. Look where the uh, fuel numbers are going to be for your strategy when you come down to into pit lane. And then maybe try to maybe get an overcut or undercut, depending on what your strategy is. In all of these different scenarios, racing through the heads of these drivers, there are uh, several large teams, four, five, six, seven cars per team in the field. Curious if they'll strategize together or because it's, you know, not an intermediate racetrack or a, a super speedway racetrack, I should say, where you're kind of really dependent on making calls with other cars to benefit yourself. If we'll even see any of those kind of team alliances do much tonight at all or if it's simply just going to be every man for himself and then kind of who decides that baseline strategy as well, right? Agonal right now showing some muscle is kind of the car to beat. So if you feel like you can't beat Agonal on an even car as him, same strategy, same everything, then it's going to force you to go off. So then do you pit earlier? Do you pit later? And then it's all those different variations of what is in the end, the same strategy could be what decides who wins this race again we'll see but agonal didn't look lights out in those opening 40 45 laps but lorenzo that's what can be so deceptive about this guy again a three-time winner this year a two-time defending series champ he knows it's not one in the first five laps that's why i don't think he was that stressed but we saw that early pass courtesy 
a Sam Nieto to go to the top spot. Agano Phillip is simply running his race, and all the other cars just happen to be on the racetrack at the same time as him. He, he doesn't base his strategy and drive according to what everybody else is doing. He does his thing, and he lets the cars fall where they may. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just, you know, he has his game plan, does whatever he wants, and if, and, and it is working, you know. I think it, it, it worked at Richmond very well for him. Uh, Daytona as well. Every, every other track that he's gone on the calendar, I think has worked his fashion. That's what impresses me a lot about Agno Phillips, someone that, you know, he now he pro driver, so that makes him a little bit of, a, you know, uh, he, I think driving against these guys at the top level um, help out. You know, you, you do your own thing, see if uh, what stretches out during a race like this. And uh, and eases up the job as uh, Farina is having a little bit of a wiggle outside of number four. And uh, one other thing, I think uh, I saw Radicic just outside of the race. Unfortunately, another retirement. 31 laps in for Radicic. So tough for him, and not what he would have wanted in his RSR Cup Series debut. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, his night will come to a premature end. Uh, after he was running uh, towards the tail end of the lead lap. Mentioned that it was not only his first race, but also Dalton Randolph's first race. He's already had some trouble with that incident in turn number two. So the debut races for some of the newest faces to this full throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series maybe not going quite as they had hoped early on in this one. And take a look and see if anything uh, of note happened there. And curious if there was some sort of a connection issue associated as well. Uh, with his decision to retire, uh, but his night is done. Uh, it seems at this point um, he will uh, give a point to Thomas George. Thomas George has been struggling. George going to get a spot back based on that pass. And look at this battle now off of the high banks of turn four all over each other. This battle just inside the top 10 or so. In fact, just outside of it. That gray number seven to Kyle Trudell. The 19 is Bradley Burke. That's the white and blue Get Wet Esports machine. And then behind them, it's the Tron colors of the 12 Orozcato. So 10th, 11th, and 12th up for grabs right here. Yeah, but one of the interesting things is how Burke actually washed out on three and four, right, Evan? Because he had to lift off the car a little bit so he doesn't make contact with Trudell, and Trudell managed it to... Uh, you know live out uh, live another day in the midst of all these things you know happening on the track which is good for him but uh this could have gone a ride every single scenario as harry's have a massive wiggle coming out of number two but somehow keeps it on the track but uh that rear is gonna ask for help down the stretch and look at the seven kind of offset to the outside almost three wide now as they come off of the with maverick davis flying around both of them on the outside of the racetrack what a move for maverick davis a two for one special and often imitated but never duplicated the 20 to cody harris wants to do the same he'll go to the outside of the 15 of trepa gonna get that spot trepa not happy with the pinch in the center of the quarter, but the Drip Designs 28 machine to Harris gets one of them. But what a big win for Maverick Davis, who is now up to the number five spot on track. It's the highest we've seen him all race long. Yeah, absolutely. What a move from Davis. That was beautiful to watch, you know, coming out at the number three, you know, cooking both, uh, you know, Mariah and Harris eventually own number three. And I thought, oh, he's gonna get, not going to have a run as Harris have a massive issue again out of number three. Oh, he's going to open up the door for Trappa. Can Trappa make it work on that middle lane, though? The middle lane looks really good with these uh, worn out tires. So very much now in the longest green flag run of the night into both things who spaced out up front. This battle from third on back is kind of compressed down on top of itself. Uh, Phillip leads. Nieto's 1.1 seconds behind him in P2, but they're kind of on Gilligan's Island because this is third on back over three seconds off of the leaders. And Maverick Davis wants some more to the inside of Frenosh, but when he made that move, I don't know if it was the arc into the corner or just too much speed, but in that 15 really started to push up the hill almost into Frenosh and now look at Cody Harris struggling. The 28 car just made a move on Trepa a lap ago, but 
That car either got into or got loose and almost got into the fence in four. And it allowed not only the 50 Utrepa to pass him back, but now that 24 are Grant Davis to go to his inside. Yeah, absolutely. I think Davis might not be able to because that inside lane loses a little bit of a entry speed. But again, lots of corner outside speed on the exit off number four. And that does the 24 retains the position for the brief moment question is can he seal the deal number one and two as we look at the replay what happened to harris one more time yeah, just a big bobble there and very quickly inside opens up and no hesitation trepa got it early and as you can see davis was able to complete the pass in the end so you kind of bust your butt for what five six seven laps to get a spot and then one mistake throws it away and speaking of mistakes this time one from trepa he gets into the turn four safer barrier almost identical to what we saw at a harris a few laps ago and that mistake will cost trepa one maybe more as that car seems to be off the pace a little bit yeah, the car got a little bit wobbly outside of number two just now. And uh, it is that thing, Evan. Mean, we were talking about hot track, like you said, 116 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, maintain the tire, you, you know, temperature right here. Once you burn out the rears or any of the other tires that require a little bit of grip on the corner entry and then maintenance, just make your run much more complicated because you're not going to have a lot of place, if, if any place at all, for you to cool down those tires. You can even see Fariners. The car just getting wobbly trying to maintain the car in line so it doesn't lose the toe to gas and also try to maintain the track position on maverick davis as well so there is a an irony in the fact that we were talking about you know you could work real hard if you're cody harris to to make a pass but then all it takes is one lap to throw it all away and almost as if it was on cue it was a mistake by trepa uh, far more than 20 laps into the run, but you can tell these drivers are having some of those handling issues that we had kind of alluded to. And these battles have only ramped on up. This is all for currently fourth on back. Maverick Davis has been trying for one more to the outside of Andrew Freenosh. He'll get there this time behind them. It'll be Davis to the inside of Lariah in two sets of two by two. The 15 car winds it up like a top, and Davis with a big pass. He's now at a race high P4. And Lariah with a big lunge outside of number two, trying to get as much speed as he could possibly monster, monster in, and uh, got blocked by Farinas coming into the back stretch. Couldn't get a run in on the 88, but so far retains that position. Oh, trap all around on the grass. Not the first time we've seen that. There's already some tire tracks off it in the grass, but Trepa get a spin to a stop. No yellow, though, and now the caution comes late for yellow flag number two on the night. He had just spun off of the racing surface, but when he got back up to speed and kind of pulled onto the racetrack slowly, it triggered that automatic yellow for the iRacing service and we will have our second yellow let's see how it happened and he had plenty of help yeah minor contact from from the from perspective of making up uh, between him and harris but that's all you need for you to go around at 160 to 180 miles per hour that one touch even the slightest touch is uh is all you need with worn out tires for you to go either on the wall or on the grass and we were so close to approaching green flag pit stops that there's not going to be much guesswork in this past the halfway point we're going to group them up again in an open pit road and all this is is an opportunity for somebody to make a mistake right you, you can't really gain a ton you might get a spot maybe two but what you don't want is a mistake you can't miss the box you can't speed uh all of those kind of ticky tacky uh penalties 
This is not the time for an error. And that includes Agado Phillip. Agado had really settled in to the biggest race lead we had seen all night. Now he's got to play defense, but he's got the benefit of the number one pit stall. Looks like a pretty clean entry for all of them. It is going to be four tires and fuel throughout. You'll see the right side drop the two car, maybe a touch ahead of Agado Phillip on the jack, but Agado going to be closest to that line off of pit road. They will get to his heels but Agno Phillips stays P1. And Farina's beat Maverick to the punch on the outside of the pit lane and retains P4 for now. And uh, interesting, interesting enough, everybody putting up four tires. I think uh, that was the strategy for you to make at this point. You know, you still have uh, two sets available, Evan, in my opinion. So... Uh, at which point do you think, if we get another yellow flag, uh, which lap do you think someone would risk maybe a two-tire set strategy in comparison to four? I would say, like, now lap 100, in my opinion. Yeah, I would say the same thing, but I was actually pretty surprised when we were only 20 laps into the run and everybody took four, how much they valued those tires. Now, that's obviously a different scenario because, well, you can't win the race at lap number 20. Uh, so you're not going to take that risk. But I think it did show the value that they all hold in a fresh set of tires. And I think it's going to depend on, listen, this is caution flag number two on the night. But we're just past halfway. I mean, there's a, a plenty bit of racing to go. Um, I would not be surprised if they deferred to the four tire as the better option or kind of the safer option. But if I'm a midfield guy, right, a a major, a wide master, a Burke kind of just outside of the top 10. And I think, listen, I can't win this on pace. I got to do something different. I think that's the ballpark where some drivers may decide to go for the two for, but I think the two tires calls might be in the next cycle of pit stops, right? Say we go another mm -hmm. 40 laps. Then when we get into the final 30, the 20s, the 10s, I think that's where we might see some of the gambling. But that's interesting because I think... With a 60 to go this time by, in theory, we could go the distance on fuel. Yeah, you, you'd be, I think, cutting very close. Um, I'm, I'll estimate maybe 58 laps-ish, 58 or 56, if, you're, if your fuel efficiency is really that good and you're not over, you know, over paddling the car outside of the corners and wasting a lot of fuel in. But uh, it's going to be an interesting green flag run if we go all the way in. And uh, there you go, Barney, just holding his flag, getting ready for a green flag one more time. He hasn't had a lot of work to do so far tonight, so he's Poor getting his money's worth out of uh, only the second yellow flag on the night. Uh, should be seeing the lights go out on top of the pace car this time through. Also interesting, look at that tail end of the field. A couple cars actually coming down pit road for a second stop of service. James Ross in the 14, Eric Papanow in the 17. Curious if they are actually coming in to top off on fuel. Get a little bit more in the tank. They were already the last two cars on the lead lap, so thought maybe that's what they were going for, but they're both simply just going to drive through pit road. So uh, interesting decision as they will basically intentionally drop to the tail end of the line. I think at this point, is, it wouldn't be a bad idea, given the fact that uh, it, Texas is one of those tracks when it gets to, you know, crunch time is usually a track that yellow breed yellows, right, Evan? So it, it wouldn't be the, the, you know, the dumbest strategy for you to be at the back and um, watch all the chaos ensues. But uh, 60 to go, I don't know. I think this is still a little bit early in my books, but uh, let's see. Third re is second restart on the on the way in a little bit. One thing I can say is is we've had basically no strategy to this point. Two yellows, yep. and in both cases, everybody has been wholesale on the service. Four tires that feel every time. So once again, we'll come to a restart where everybody is on the same strategy. This time though, Agno Phillip going to be the control car for a restart. For the first time tonight, he's got the 20, a Brandon Gas behind him. Green flag in the air. It's a good start for the 94 car. Battle's going to be P2. Nieto comes down across the nose of the 20 to play defense. He had to. He had to come down. Otherwise, he probably would have lost second spot to Brandon Gas. 
to Farinas and Brandon Gas eventually as Gas goes into third place and now Nieto on the charge into Agno Phillip on the inside. And now Nieto down to the inside. He mentioned for the top spot. All kinds of side by side action going on. But does Agno Phillip lose out? It's certainly going to go to the two car Nieto with the stripe. But once they get up to speed, the top spin better. Can Phillip use that to his advantage? It's not a good entry in new race leader once again sam nieto sole possession of the number one spot three wide at a moment for p2 as agonal phillip will stay clear of freenosh in the 20 and after all of that phillip only gets the laps under the yellow lead in all of that and now he's got to go back to work yeah putting like the ball is on phillips court to try to get back and waste that uh Goodyear rubber for you to for him to get closer on the end. Meanwhile, battle in this mid pack on the top inside the top 10 spots looking really feisty, nearly three wide. Coming into turn number three, I think uh, that's the number four, seven of Trudell on the inside trying to make a move on Greg Davis. Look at all of the jockey and a couple of cars. At least one of them got the fence that time. I saw some smoke. On the exit of four, that safer barrier jet now has caught a couple of cars out tonight, mostly on the old tires. But look at this lead pack of 13 cars strong, separated only by 1.2 seconds as they run right now. They're probably more tight right now than they were coming to the green flag. And we're running full speed at about 170 miles an hour in the middle of the corner. Yeah, absolutely. Which is insane to think about 170 miles with these NASCAR cars and... Uh... Still really good battles in the top 10 spots. You can see Bradley Burke on the inside making the move on Great Davis. Grant Davis restart just not been the best at all. This uh, second restart off the race. It just hasn't been what he needed, but there's more to come from. We'll see if he can turn things around as we continue in what could be the final green flag stretch of this race. Those top four now, single file, just for a moment behind them on each other's door the 15 machine outside of the racetrack of Maverick Davis he was leaning on the 44 of Michael Araya they are fighting for P5 and 6 behind them Harris to the inside of the 7 of Trudell that battle for 7th and 8th spot top side the victor as Davis clears Loraya. yeah and uh and Farina's trying to retain the best way he can that gap to the top three. He doesn't want to lose that fourth spot. He knows that fourth spot is important for him as the uh, as the stint goes on by, which for him is going to be key. But Davis, uh, Maverick Davis, thinking otherwise, Lariah trying to get a really good run on the outside of turn number two. Two wide are basically all of them. Three wide formed up as Cody Harris trying to go up one more spot at two spots, actually, on Trudell as well. He's looking for that two-for-one special, and behind them, it's it's Lariah who's been really struggling. It wasn't no more than three laps ago where he had restarted and had a decent look at P4 on track. Now he's eighth, having been passed up by all of them. Up front, though, here comes Agnel Phillip. You can cue the Jaws music. Nieto made a quick pass off of the restart, but Agnel Phillip punches back. And the guy who has led more laps than anybody else tonight goes back out in front. Right now, Agno Phillips still just too good. Yeah, and you, and you saw Nieto have a little bit of a bobble outside of number two. That's why I think he lost ground. Not only uh, Philip got a good run on number two, made the overtake work on three and four, but uh, that was all set by Nieto as well. That was a little bit of help from the number two, too. So death, taxes, and Agno Phillip leading races in the full throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series. He's that good. Again, he doesn't care if you're going to put the pressure to him in the opening three laps. He knows give him 10, he's better. That has been the case on two of the three green flag runs so far tonight. Still a lot to be decided, though, including this battle from what is really P2 on back, but a lot of it centered around that seven to Trudell. Trudell stays ahead for the moment. Of the 15 of Davis, that one four five six on track. That old black 88 car of Andrew Freenosh, one of the highest running drivers in the points without a win yet this year, would love one. But I just haven't seen that little bit extra out of the 88 car so far tonight. He's been there the whole time, but 
Kyle Trudell, a different story. The seven has not been a part of this conversation much, but has driven his way through this field. He's up to P4, and he's watching these top three saying, I want to join in on the fun. Yeah, which is insane to think about. Trudell quietly, you know, eating out the rough edges, uh, you know, of the cake. And uh, now he got in, in, in the midst of, you know, the good portion of the cake. That's where... Uh, the, uh, the the bittersweet things are and uh, he wants to go to battle against Brandon Gas to try to get a really good run into turn number one but still some gap that needs to be constructed by the number seven so if he wants to get through as we look into uh, Brendan Gas a vintage racing team number 20's cars perspective coming into turn number three and you're talking about food analogies and I think in in the Lone Star State a, a good analogy is to reference Bucky's and, and say that Kyle Trudell feels like there's fresh brisket on the board. Uh, he knows oh, yeah, burner. The, the time is getting good now, right? It's prime time in the race, 40 laps down, 80 laps down. It's it's kind of the home stretch. If you're going to turn it up a notch, now is the time to do it. And Trudell is holding to pace with a lot of the cars who, again, have kind of been up here all night long. He has gained 14 spots. He's the biggest mover in the field after starting back at 18th. And now he's the highest running car of all of those who have yet to lead a lap tonight. What can the Martin Sports XPM Toyota do? Or does that margin of the top three just become insurmountable? Not a great exit that time off a of two. Davis actually going to kind of push him along there as opposed to challenging for the spot. The challenge with starting back in traffic is that you takes up so much of your race making passes, but also with each pass that you make, it's going to be harder, right? Those cars get faster and faster and faster. So passing Brandon Gas for third here may not be as easy as passing whoever was in 13th at the time that he got to that spot. So Kyle Trudell has had to work harder than anybody else. He's passed more cars than anybody else so far, but that does not necessarily just equate into a golden ticket to waltz on up into the top three. He's going to still have to oh, work no. hard for it, and now the lap's going to start to count against him. Uh, and not only that, it, it, he's going to have to call it with tires, you know, the, the the dirty air and everything, and also Maverick Davis, you know, breathing out his neck try to get a really good run so now you can see him outside trying to maximize the run outside of number two for him to you know potentially do the overtake on the number seven of Trudell's will be looking to the extreme performance of motorsports number seven of Trudell so um, yeah and you can he, and you can see he's trying to maintain as much as he could possibly can you know this uh, the tires at, at a, a optimal pace and optimal temperature and optimal uh, range for him to him get a get a really good run and longevity on the car the problem is gas you know restart has been very solid so far oh wiggle yeah not the best corner exit there for true dell and he got loose all on his own and that might just be the slip up that he couldn't afford if he was still thinking about being a race winner tonight because it allowed the 15 at davis to go on through andrew freenosh gonna come outside the challenge not only costly is the mistake in the spots you lose in the instant, but the cost is you slide like that at 150 miles an hour, you're going to heat those tires. Those right side tires are going to get cooked, and then you're going to struggle for much more than just one lap. And look at this. Freenosh, clear. Lariah, clear. Harris to the inside. The 28 car looking to be the fourth driver to pass the seven at about a lap and a half. So... We talked a big game and hyped him up, but now Trudell in the blink of an eye starting to struggle. Yeah, I think he overdone his tires a little bit. You can even see trying to defend the, the middle lane the best way he can into lane two against Cody Harris, but a, a, a little bit of a better exit for the number seven, though. Surviving the ordeal, but the question is, will be short-lived, though, because the number 28... There you go. Harris is going to have the better run on the inside, and he's going to bring Brad Bradley Burke alongside with him. Burke's going to join in on the fun. Somebody else who is, I'd say, had a pretty quiet night. We've seen Bradley in some of these battles, but started sixth, runs ninth. Is, it's kind of been a status quo afternoon for Burke as he still wants to hang on to a top 10 spot again. You see those positions gained up and down on the scoring to pile on left hand side of your screen. Phillips is running exactly where he started. A bit of a kind of mixed bag story there. He has trickled down from time to time, but 
has been able to rise back up to the top spot where he stands and is pulling away. Meanwhile, Harris is still all over the seven to true Dell Davis looking for clean air as well the 19 machine a Burke on the bottom all of that for p7 on back and it's typically an indicator now as Burke slides up the hill that you're slower than the cars behind you if we see them stacking up on your bumper like we're looking at right here yeah, not only that, we also see Harris have a little bit of an issue near contact between Burke and Harris over here, but somehow they don't make any contact at all, and Trudell got checked up in the midst of all this. Bring Greg Davis out of 24. Who would have thought the number 24? We counted them out a little bit over here, Evan, but now the number 24 inside deeper into the top 10. Just because that we're two thirds of the way through this race does not mean that the kitchen's closed. There is plenty of opportunity still left in this Texas 200. Philip has become the dominant car in the second half. He holds steady at a half a second advantage over Nieto. No story there, neither with gas for the moment. He's pretty comfortable for the moment in third, but Maverick Davis is the one who's trying to be the instigator. The 15 has been chipping away last time a 31 317 compared to the 291 so gas certainly the driver who has been on the charge and is doing everything he can to hold off that 15 of davis but davis has gotten to the rear bumper yeah, and now that is, I think that's the best run he ever had in this race. Maverick Davis trying to, you know, get a piece of the pie, get a piece, you know, that slice of the brisket, you know, uh, that smoked brisket in that outside lane. The question, he cannot cook the tires, just kind of cursed him a little bit, but retains the position for the time being. And now a little bit ahead, third place for the number 15. And if we did go green to the end of the race, it would be the longest green flag run of the night. I know we're a long way from home still, but with 35 to go at the stripe, that would suggest that this would not go to the scheduled distance without an incident because we haven't had a run that long yet so far tonight. Dalton Randolph goes to the garage. Unfortunately, his RSR debut ends early. That is five cars to DNF so far in this Texas 200. Again, you can see that kind of safety bubble that Sam Nieto's enjoying. He is not close enough to challenge Phillip for the lead, but he can at least taste solace in the fact that well, Davis and Gas and everybody else can't quite get to him. Some side-by-side, -side, a little bit further back in traffic. It's the 24 car at Davis and the 7 at Trudell. It's a battle for P9. Yeah, Trudell trying to hang on the best way he can. Gets better runs outside of 3 and 4. But now you can see a little bit of a cook of the number 7. It's struggling with grip outside of the corner. And now the 24 is going to have to run in a little bit of the nose right in front of the number 7. But that was short-lived, though. Now Ross Cato wants in in the action as well. Trying to get inside that top 10 on Trudell. Three-way battle. We've seen some... Moments right there on the racetrack off of turn number two where we've had contact. We've had some incidents get a little bit nervous when you go into there. So compressed, they're able to make it through that time. No major issue, no major concern. But again, we've hit 30 laps into the run. And this is where consistently tonight drivers have really started to struggle with the tire fall off and kind of starting to lose the race cars. Those self-inflicted errors become more and more prominent and I would get nervous if I'm close to other cars would buy tires and their tires are starting to fall off. Then the opposite. That 24 car doing a good job to win out for now. He holds off. Cato also outside clearing Trudell. So the 7 slips all the way back now to P11 and almost puts it in the fence that time. Yeah, somehow kept it on the track though. But those... Uh, I. I think we can affirm right now that uh, Trudell's uh, long stint is basically done. Now he's in basically, you know, nursing mode, uh, nursing the pain. He was aggressive early. We talked a lot about it, but unfortunately, it, it just seems like used it up a little bit too much early in this stint and. Trudell now struggling big time, having to fall in all the way outside. 
of the top 10. We focus on Bradley Burke in the 19 car. He and the 20 to Harris are going to do battle. You'll start to think, is it deja vu? Because a lot of these battles of two cars here, three cars there, a lot of these guys have been kind of fighting the same cars all night long. Very much the case between these two. They've been fighting a plenty inside of the top 10. Just ahead of them, Michael Araya sits in P6, trying to chase down Brandon Gass in P5. Yeah, and, and Farina, you know, getting back on Maverick Davis for P3. He's going to now block the lane out of the 15. And now the 15 trying to get a better run on the inside. Go for the switch back on turn number three. But good battles of Mountie over here, despite uh, the, you know, the fact that Agno Phillip breaking away one more time on Sim Nieto and everybody else, you know, just it's kind of like stretched out, even if it is two apart or three apart. But, uh, Good, there is still some good racing to be here talked about over here, like gas on Mariah on the inside and outside for gas, uh, inside for gas, outside for Mariah. So maybe a late, maybe surge for Andrew Freenosh. He has been kind of in fourth, in fifth a lot of this race. I think third may have been the best that we had seen out of him so far in this one, and now he's returned to that spot continuing to try to chase things down but again at, at 1.7 seconds off of the leader sure you get to p3 but but does that actually give you a chance to do anything with the cards that are first and second ahead of you i think that gap just going to be a little bit too much regardless I agree. 26 laps to go this time by trying to see if they can stretch it on fuel and tires to make it to the end of the texas 200 on this stint Lariah p5 those are those orange and blue colors of the sim speed shop chevrolet p5 he's ahead of this battle which i think is more so between gas and company right now as davis looking to the inside of the 19 car a burke can't do it and for the kind of small field right low 20s couple of restarts here and there i don't think there's been any points in this race lorenzo where this midfield battle has been able to just breathe a sigh of relief the leaders have had their opportunities they've gotten some space they've had comers they've had goaders this midfield has just been on top of each other from the get-go and it has not let up and and for us that's a good thing you know it's, it, it makes the race more dynamic it makes the race more engaging for everybody and that's really good you know in, in my opinion of course but uh it, it, what impresses me is like some of the drivers you normally think would you wouldn't count in you know like cody harris you know in resurgence now going the inside of brandon gas right there you know going all the way down to the apron and maybe be able to do the overtake on the number 20 and uh trying to have a resurgence after he was like p3 all the way scaled down nearly outside of the top 10 but now with a resurgence into p7 maybe says near contact between both of them Side by side again. Oh, and a big shot that time. The 20 car and the 28 exchanging blows down the back straight away. At a battle for P6 and 7 as the 19 and the 24 watch on. Will we see tempers overflow? Harris first pushed up into the 20. Gas cut back down, gave him a shot back. And now three wide for a moment. Burke looking to the outside. And a front row seat goes to Grant Davis. We're on board with him. Three wide down the back straight away. And we saw something like that with Burke. But Burke was uh, the meat of the sandwich. And a little bit of contact. Grant Davis had to back out a little bit. He's going to bring Ross Cato. And Cato, I think, had to check up a little bit. Uh, so he doesn't hit the number 424. But a uh, near, you know, death would nearly 20 laps to go. For a moment, these drivers have an opportunity to collect their thoughts, but between the kind of bumper cars down the back stretch, the big shot that Davis gave to the 20 the lap prior to this in turn number three, I think we're pretty fortunate that all of those race cars are still on the racetrack. It's the first bit of zestiness, I'll say, we've seen tonight. We've had close <laughs> battles, we've had mistakes, but it's been pretty cordial. That uh, lap and a half there has got the radios heated up. There is plenty of discussion going on between all of these drivers as we check back in on the leaders. Agnel Phillip has been holding strong 
He hasn't checked out, not quite as big of an advantage as what we saw to him at the end of the second run in this race, but it is still a hardy seven to eight tenth of a second advantage over Sam Nieto P2. Now, the fastest car on track is Andrew Freenosh. He sits in third, but it's the gap that I think is the trouble for him. And I mentioned that when he got to that spot, right? Yeah, you got third, but can you make up 1.7 seconds, right? Third is one thing. 1.7 seconds is another. That is a tall order on some of the fastest cars in the series. He's chipped away at it. It's only 1.2 now, but he's going to have to keep up a significant pace if he's going to continue to chip away at this rate. Absolutely. And and, and also begs the question, if he was P2, I think this would have, if he was P2, this probably would have been more doable, right, Evan? Because you'd have to contend with Sam Nieto right in front of you. You don't have to, you know, put, you know, your car more in line for you to do the overtaking. Clear yourself from the number two as fast as possible without losing time to Agno Phillip. But uh, both guys are catching uh, Agno Phillip, even if even if it isn't, you know, massive strides and everything. It, 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 they're catching the 94, but it's like small progresses. They're gonna need something else. I would say they need like take one tenth away here and there to start thinking, you know, making battles uh, with like five, four, three to go. And there is big trouble for Chris Trepa who is down pit road with some sort of an issue. I think he broke the right front of that car after getting into the outside wall. He apologized to Widemaster, said, sorry, but I lost the steering. And then I saw him drop down the leaderboard. So Chris Trepa, somebody else who we were shouting out earlier in this race, had been one of the biggest movers charging through the field. It is going to be an anticlimactic end for him as this trip to pit road is going to drop him all the way to P18. Oof. And Chapa's race just going from you know good to bad to worse. Unfortunate to see that from uh, from from the number fifty, but anyway, still in the race. So what that's what matters the most. Ow! Yeah, that's a, that's a hit. Turn two has been a spot to be, and then he broke the right front there. Almost cleaned out Windmaster when they went into turn number three. I think he's pretty fortunate that he was able to get to pit road. Winemaster kind of shook off the apology and, and said, I, I kind of figured that was coming, having seen the hit that the 50 had taken. And it seems like Trepa actually not even returning to the racetrack. Look at all that counter steer, though. I mean, that car was loose. He's trying to counter steer it because it's sliding. And when it grips up, man, that was a huge hit. And that damage may just, in fact, end Trepa's night. No, absolutely. He's more than a minute in, in the pit lane. You know, he's going to do his service. The question is, he's already three laps down. Is he back on the track, though? It doesn't look like it. I think his uh, suspension might be broken right there, Evan. So I would estimate maybe his day is done. It appears that that is going to be the case. And uh, unfortunate end for Trepa, who had showed a promise tonight. That would make him the sixth driver to DNF in this Texas 200. And now you can really feel it if you're the race leaders. 15 laps to go now 14 laps to go at texas in the home stretch still fighting inside of the top five this one for p4 maverick davis in the 15 car has been caught by michael oraya he was able to shake him off that time the 15 car kind of intentionally left the bottom available for Lariah, knowing the top side's kind of the better place to be with the runs off of the corner. Curious if Lariah can get to the top side on the 16 car, because clearly right now he's the better of the two of them. And the more they fight, the more opportunity it's going to give Bradley Burke. Don't look now. That teal and white number 19 car closed it in. He wants to be the third man in on this battle absolutely but a good battle from you know good fight from the number 15 you know using that outside lane try to get a really good run near contact between the number 15 and the 44 as the number 15 opens up a wider angle manages to break away even slightly over there against uh, Laria uh, Evan but uh Berg now surely into this battle 100% Look at this on the door again, really pinching each other down. And now Bradley Burke is in this. What do you do if you're the 19 car? Do you wait and pick the inside or the outside lane to go with? Or do you try to catch them both off guard and go for the three wide move? We've seen plenty of both of those options tonight. 
But it's time for the 19 to make a decision. For the moment, he'll go topside. Follows in the tire tracks of Maverick Davis. Looks to a third lane topside, but unable to get there right now. And instead, he'll kind of ride in line behind the 15, but he's going to get boxed in, right? If you don't get your own lane, where's he going to go? Car in front of you, car behind you. So he's going to push Davis into three, enough to push him clear of the 44. And not only that, Berg is going to get a really good run on the outside. So might be able to do the overtake over here on Mariah. There you go. Done. Number 19 goes up one spot. The question is, they cannot afford to, you know, lollygaggle way too much in terms of battles. Not far behind is one Cody Harris. And even though Cody isn't as fast as these two guys, one that's one one thing that it takes is a battle. You know, things going all right. One, two, ten second lost. And the number 28 comes and make this a fourth threat. And something that Agno Phillip, your race leader, doesn't want to see is that right there. Contact between the 15 and the 19. It is all hands off at ears, elbows up in the final 10 laps at Texas. The 19 of Burke had the advantage maybe by a thousandth of a second at the start finish line. That time he is clear. Now Davis going to have to deal with Michael Araya on the inside. So impressive stuff for Burke. He was able to catch the 15 and the 44 while they fought. He passes both of them and he leaves while they are still fighting with each other. You know what is, what is insane thing is that number 15 was actually loose. Outside of number two manages to, to survive the whole ordeal. You're gonna see that a wider lane going to the number 15 right here, Evan. He's going to bring it back around, get a better run on the number 44. He's going to get a pinch thin, but the number 44 in Lariah goes up one spot into the top five. So Lariah had to work hard, but in the end is able to finally shake off Davis. But it's not even a pass in the end because, well, they were fighting for what was position number four. But because Burke leapfrogged them, that pass for Lariah just maintains the spot that he had about 10 laps to go so now he's gonna want to catch back up to the 19 car but look at that gap from those cars fourth on back to these in the top three still waiting for something to change up front but it has been the status quo philip eight tenths of a second over nieto p2 1.2 seconds over Freenosh in third. They have been very even the last couple of times around the racetrack and it's six laps to go it's hard to think that something's going to change. What all Agno Phillip cares about right now is he wants to see the white flag for this race to be official. Oh, yeah. He wants the paint. To, he wants this green flag paint to be over with. As you can even see Nieto's car, he's actually throwing the car all the way down to the inside, trying to maximize the speed into the corner entry off three and one and then try to carry us uh, that speed all the way down to two and four the thing is not working well for him and farina is actually doing the better job out of these three if we're talking about battling around the track uh for a podium spot just looking up the road as well Freenosh has got uh plenty of clean racetrack there's you know no lapped cars interfering with his ability to get to nieto to get to philip but philip's also got clean track i mean it is a straight up fight between these three there are elements in favor of agnel the clean air that nieto and freenosh don't get right they seem pretty spaced out on the track right now but there is going to be some elements of that dirty air that disturbance the traffic from just running behind somebody else that's also going to make things a little bit more difficult for Nieto than they are for Freenosh and company. Last lap, Nieto, 31, 697. It was a tenth better than Agno Phillip. He's breathing down his neck now, maybe. Half a second is the gap. Does Nieto have one last effort in him? Ah, uh, it's gonna be hard. You know, you have to close out the gap with three to go. You basically have to take one. It's like nearly 0.15 seconds, you know, 150. 150 hundreds of a second you need to take per lap and even then you have to count a little bit of luck for you to you know get a good run on agonal philip and though the overtake as they're going to go down two to go gap stabilize in a half a second this is agonal philip's race to lose it is his to lose at this point and losing is not something that agonal philip does a lot of we mentioned it off at the top of the broadcast he's a two-time defending champion 
but his start to 2024 has been better than any season yet out of this young phenom, a three-time winner, Daytona, Bristol, Richmond, looking to get a fourth win in six starts. He's got the white flag, one lap to go. Race is official, there we go. So no matter what, we race to the checkered flag. There is traffic in front of Eric Papenow. Does Papenow play a factor at all? Frenosh trying to close on Nieto. No battle for second and third either. Phillips got space in four. He's clear of the traffic and he has done it yet again. Three straight full throttle cup series wins for Agnel Phillips. And the ProPublica Guild member and the two-time cup champion continues to prove why he currently stands at the top of the full throttle real sim racing cup series mountain. And if you're Sam the Yano man, what can you do but kind of bow your head and give him a slow clap because a heck of a race from Sam, from Andrew, everybody else. The longest green flag run of the night at 62 laps in length to the end. They kept him honest, but in the end, he was just too much. And here's a familiar sight, and it's Agno Phillip burnouts on the front straightaway. Yeah, back-to-back -back victories over here for Agno Phillip. You know, one in Richmond over here, uh, last round, one over here at Texas. The question that needs to be asked, though, is, is there any stop to this 94 charge in the championship? It seems like it is on cruise control now, and sure, there are a long ways to go, a long regular season, plenty of playoff resets. It's it's far from already written, but Agatha Phillip doing his best to maybe intimidate the competition into submission. He continues to do Agatha Phillip things. Let's take a look at your full race results tonight. Again, that final margin of victory ballooned a little bit in the final turn. It was about four tenths of a second to come to the white flag. Agato Phillip, the A51 Pro X Alta Chevrolet, takes the race win over the two of Sam Nieto. And then the third place car is Andrew Frenosh. We will try to get a word with all of those drivers in just a moment. Uh, Bradley Burke and Michael Araya finish inside of the top five with Maverick Davis, Grant Davis, Cody Harris, Ross Cato, and Brandon Gass, your top 10. Then we go to Jaron Weinmaster, Munazzi Major, Brad Larson, Kyle Trudell after what could have been a race on scale down all the way to 14th place. Unfortunate for the number seven, Steve Silva in P15, James Ross, Ari Papinow, DeAndre Kane, Chris Treppa. Unfortunate to see that a uh, or esports guy go away on his first start, and Dalton Randolph another first start, another debutant, not having the best results outside of top 20. And to put this uh, one on a bow, more cars unable to make it to the scheduled distance. Thomas George, Philip Radicic, and Mike Maddox. Got to round out your field of 23. That's a look top the bottom at your full race results. Let's go trackside and talk with tonight's race winner. We're making a bit of a habit out of this one. Three in a row for the driver of the 94 car. It's this time in Texas for Agno. <laughs> Philip Agno, congratulations. And first time on an intermediate track here in 2024. That's kind of the only thing new because this victory lane thing certainly isn't. Appreciate it, Evan. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> there was definitely a lot going on in that race. Um, you know, we had a couple different cautions that, that came at different points in the run um tricky track to, to drive the setup was definitely not not the easiest to to manage long run so um yeah i, I had, had a good time get, getting some long green runs there and racing up front with those guys i mentioned of course this one uh the first intermediate racetrack win for you this season that's not to say that uh it's a surprise uh, by any stretch. Uh, we've been to Vegas earlier this year. You guys had an okay finish in that one. Uh, you know, what, what was the difference? Is it a Las Vegas is, is not a Texas type deal or is it 
maybe something else that you've discovered here in the intermediates? Uh, didn't I, I feel like I had some damage or something. I don't remember what happened in that race. There, that was uh, that was not my best showing. I think from qualifying through to to the race, uh, I used to be pretty good at Vegas. So I don't I don't really know. I don't have like a great great answer. Texas has, has usually been pretty good to me. Um, various tracks. I know a lot of people hate it. I don't love it, uh, but I, I think it you know suits my style, driving style for for whatever that's worth. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's good to get, you know, win on kind of what's the, the heart of the, the NASCAR schedule. It doesn't sound as important maybe as it used to be, given that there's like, um, you know, not really as many of them in the, in the playoffs, especially towards the like final, final rounds. But, um, you know, it's, it's still, this is what, this was the stock car racing I grew up watching. So it's, it's good to to be able to, to put a race together on a, on a track like this. So obviously the, the speed is there. What can you do besides get the bonus points, get the wins? That's all fine and dandy through the regular season, but what is going to be the longer-term objective for you over the course of the next couple of months to make sure the advantage that you have on the field now remains there in 15 races and whatnot when we get later in the playoffs and these races start to mean a lot more? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm having, I feel like I'm, I'm just having a good time, like hopping into these and, and seeing, seeing what happens. I feel like it's a good test of my adaptation abilities, you know, trying to hop into the practice server and figure out the track before the race um, and kind of have a, have a plan for, for how to attack the race off of kind of limited info. I feel like that's, you know, something that when I, when I started on the sim, I was really focused on you know, doing lots of practice laps and, and really getting into re really honed in at every single track. And that's obviously not, you know, not really um, possible um, for a variety of reasons this year. So um, it's just good to, yeah, to, to have, you know, some different looks at it and, and, and try to figure out like, okay, I, I, on one run, I burned up too much of this tire. Like what do I have to do on the next one to like fix that and like trying to get better through the race. Um, and hopefully, you know, and when the when the races start mattering more and everybody starts, uh, you know, probably putting in a little bit more time to prepare and whatnot, we'll we'll have to do the same in all likelihood. Um, but it's, you know, those skills of being able to adapt mid races are going to carry over. So at least that's a hope. So that's that's kind of my my thought and my plan. I bet the fact that uh, Talladega is next week is a good thing and a bad thing. Good because you can't really practice a ton for a race like that, and you've already won the intermediate racetrack so far this year in Daytona. But the bad being that it's it's Talladega. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it'll be fun. Um, I I enjoy I enjoy the restrictor play tracks. I don't know. Um, they especially when they don't. You know, the, we have we have wins this year. Um, I have a win on a restrictor play track. So I'm not super worried about the actual like needing to show anything or, or get better necessarily at anything. It's just fun to, to go out there and mix it up um, and and be able to, to to race that style of racing. I do. I do enjoy it genuinely, especially, you know, when we're all kind of like dogfighting at the, the end. It can can be very enjoyable depending on, you know, who you're racing around and how it ends up. But um yeah, we'll go in. I don't have to practice at all for it, as you said, and we'll we'll uh, we'll see what happens. I um, think it'll be pretty pretty fun. We look forward to catching you again for that one uh, again, Idol. Congratulations on another race win here tonight at Texas. Appreciate it, Evan. Thank you. It's a race winner tonight, and it is a four times race winner. It's going to keep racking them up. Agato Phillip comes out on top today. Sam Nieto had a great race in his own right tonight. Lorenzo led 31 laps. That was second only to the eventual race winner and was within striking distance. Got it down to about a half a second before it was all said and done. You're with tonight's P2 finisher. Yeah, absolutely. So Sam finally back to the podium after Daytona, but uh, not in the top spot like you wanted to be, but uh, you got to be pleased with this result uh, nevertheless, right? Yeah, man, I'll take a P2. Uh, I mean, the goal is always to win, but, you know, out here racing a pro guy, you can't, you can't win them all. No, absolutely, man. And uh, talking about this race in general, because you had basically, you know, the ups and downs of fighting in the pack and everything, and also trying to get closer to to fill up down the line. You even got up to like four tenths of a second at a one point. But uh, what is the difficulty that makes this track uh, for the 
next gen cars it isn't more like the pack racing per se or the fact that it is a hot track and a one and a half mile track that usually burns out the front uh, front rights of the car yeah no i didn't feel like there was uh, any pack racing thank god um I mean, the, dra- the there was some draft, but the draft was actually secondary to the tires, which is a uh, a departure from the norm with this car. Usually, it's more draft than tires. But um, yeah, the weird thing about this track is turn two, one and two is just so big. Uh, there's plenty of time to either hurt your right front or hurt your right rear or hurt both. So I mean, the the key is just to I mean, not do those things, obviously, but yeah, um, if you were overdriving entry, you're going to hurt your right front. And, you know, a lot of people I, that the few people that I did pass today uh, was just off of two where they just got a little loose. So. Absolutely. Man. Yeah, man. And uh, it is a hard track. I, I got to say, I love Texas. If I have to pick out all these ovals, I love Texas because of how technical it is, you know. Of all tracks, but now switching from Texas all the way down to Talladega, track that uh, doesn't require a lot of practice per se. Coming down, you know, you have to manage, you know, the draft and everything, and manage, you know, potentially the crashes and the big one per se. Sam, what is what is your mindset going to the uh, two and two thirds uh, oval? I just uh, going to those races. I had the expect- expectation that I'm not going to make it through. I'm not going to finish the race, <laughs> and if I if I do somehow, then I'll be I'll be happy. So like, I'm not going to be disappointed because I already know I'm not going to finish. I mean, the last time you actually went into these long ovals, you got second place. But uh, you, what what about getting first place? It it always can happen. It is one of those long ovals. Let's see in about one week time. But uh, Sam, enjoy P2, and uh, we'll see you for Talladega, man. All right, thanks. See y'all next week. Such a P2 finisher tonight, rightfully the number two car, and that is Sam Nieto. On the other side, Andrew Frenosh uh, does not lead any laps tonight, but was consistently a top five car. He gets his third consecutive top three finish, and Lorenzo's with him. Yes, so Andrew, another trip to the podium over here, man, uh, third place, and uh... If you, if you have to, you know, pick between Bristol, Richmond, and this one, which one do you think was the hardest fought in terms of being in the podium? Um, Probably Richmond. A uh, track I really felt good at in the past and uh, struggled quite a bit there. So, um, yeah, this one uh, kind of felt good saving tires. I knew we were a top three car if I just, uh, you know, took care of them, and that's kind of what happened. And on that note of saving tires, I saw your your third run was actually something to, you know, lo and behold, you were faster than both Nieto and Philip down the line. Was actually, did did you want the gap to be closer when you started? To, you know, thinking, oh, I'm master, I can actually catch up to them, but or or a P, staying P3 was always in your mind. Uh, the fact that you had passed Maverick Davis and you were P3 for basically the remainder of the stint. Yeah. Um. That second run, I, I burned the tires off. I uh, kind of started doing something different in three and four and uh, uh, had tires at the end. Um, it was weird. Once I got up to Sam, like within six tenths, we were just matching lap times. The top three was just matching lap times the last 35 laps. So, um, you know, I kind of uh, uh, put myself way behind sliding through my box and then we were just fighting track position the rest of the day. Uh, if we were up at the front there on the start of that run, maybe we would have had a better shot. But um, once we got to third, I thought we were going to take off and maybe have a shot at Agnel. And then for some reason, everybody just started matching lap times and uh, I couldn't go anywhere. Um, the last 10 laps tried to run every line imaginable and, and no luck. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of how that run went. Interesting. And, and now shifting the, the focus to to Talladega, you know, you've got top five and they told you that you're basically being consistent within that top five. The only, the, your worst place finish has been 11th in this championship so far. But uh, going to Talladega, it runs same as Daytona, a little bit longer than Daytona, but that also has that confusion coming down to the final laps and the big one always looming large. How do you prepare for a track that uh, the, the big one always is creeping up close in your neck? Yeah, um, I hate plate racing. Uh, I've said that before. I know that's a very unpopular uh, thing, but it, it's just chance. Um, you kind of 
I could never figure it out. You kind of just run where you are. You hope not to get wrecked and, and survive. So I, I don't know how much preparation I can really do other than learning to avoid cars flying through the air. But, uh, yeah, this was still supposed to be a part-time schedule this year. So I don't know if we're even going to race it. Um, we've been doing somewhat decent this year. I've been having uh, quite a bit of fun running with these guys, a lot of green flag laps. So we might show up. We might not. Um, still kind of trying to make that decision. But, uh, yeah, preparation-wise, there really ain't all too much you can do. You just kind of uh, maybe – you know, go find a four leaf clover and hope uh, you can get lucky there. Some would say no preparation is the best preparation. I think Andrew, uh, <laughs> with that being said, enjoy your podium over here, man. And uh, we'll see you if, if we're going to be able to see you in Talladega in next week. Thanks so much guys. Have a good night. What a big thanks to Andrew, as well as the rest of our top three finishers, Agno Phillips, Sam Nieto, and Andrew Freenosh for giving us a little bit of time here post-race to chat it out. And we'll head to some post-race tacos at Torchies in the infield to wrap up this one. Uh, nice. Not to say that this Texas race will not stand out when we look back on the season, but it was kind of a lot of what we had seen. The likes of Freenosh, the likes of Nieto knocking on the door, banging on the door. But when it's all said and done, Agato Phillip just that little bit better, and that's kind of been the story so far for a lot of guys this year. Yeah, it's just been the Agato Phillip show, and everybody just trying to, you know, be part of, you know, sometimes being the the lead character in the books as we see the calendar over here, Talladega next week, looming large at two and two thirds oval, and the craziness that always happens around Dega is uh, going to be interesting to watch around the virtual Alabama track and. Uh, this race, that's why I love Texas. I, I, I always say I rate Texas top three, in my opinion, in terms of tracks, just because it is a fun track to drive, in my opinion. And we saw a lot of slipping and sliding, some long green flag runs, and a good battle to the end. But what is all said and done, Agno Phillip ends up in victory lane once more. And we look forward to seeing if he could possibly do it again. It's a tall order. It's anybody's game when we do it in one week's time at Talladega. But until then, that is it for us here tonight from Texas. On behalf of our entire team at Real Sim Racing, Race Spot TV, and for your broadcast crew tonight. For Dana Baird downstairs, for Lorenzo Bonder, and myself, Evan Pasoko, I want to thank you for tuning in and congratulate Agno Phillip on race win number four on this young 2024 season. We're back in one week's time. That's Monday, April 15th at iRacing's virtual Talladega Super Speedway. That race and every race of the 2024 Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series can be found exclusively exclusively here on race spot tv till next time good night from the lone star state